politically, he was passionate. And I believe in that because that's how you change things. And Pete wanted to change things. But Pete's next chosen campaign would involve a bigger stage for an even bigger issue. In 2009, he helped a low-budget drama documentary on the environment become an international hit after stepping into the starring role. Set in 2055 on our devastated planet, the age of stupid sees Pete as the last man on Earth, looking back and asking why nothing was done about climate change. We could have saved ourselves, but we didn't. We'd worked on this documentary for like three years or something, and it kind of wasn't working, and uh, eventually we decided what we needed to do was add this drama element set in the future, and for that we needed an older actor. And I immediately said, it's got to be Pete Postlethwaite, he's my favourite, you know, the best actor ever. And uh, everybody else said, don't be ridiculous. I thought, I'll just Google him, uh, just in case, and literally Google Pete Postlethwaite climate change. And the very first article that came up was his local paper going on about how he was trying to get permission for a wind turbine at his house. And I just thought, he might say yes. The question I've been asking is, why didn't we save ourselves when we had the chance? He signed up for a one-day shoot. And in about, you know, six hours, he completely transformed our film from a low-budget, trying-hard, kind of worthy documentary into, you know, one of the most talked-about films of the year, released internationally, you know, in cinemas across the world. I just find it surprising that after so much effort, the final act of our existence should be suicide. You're left with this vision of his picture, his face on your mind, warning you what's going to happen. It's game powerful there. I sent it to Al Gore. And Al Gore did the message to support the film. Once we heard that Ed Miliband, who was at that point the climate change minister, had invited himself along to our premiere, we thought, this is too good an opportunity to miss. Ed, we've made you a special pledge. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and Pete came up with the idea that he should threaten to give back his OBE if Ed commissioned this new coal power station. If you commission a new dirty coal power station at King's North, then you are clearly unfit to represent the people of Britain at the Copenhagen Climate Summit. And therefore, I promise to very sadly return to Her Majesty the Queen the OBE that I was given in 2002, because I don't believe that I can be a, a real officer of the British Empire if that is what's going to happen. I think it was an incredible, powerful statement by him because his OBE obviously meant an enormous amount to him. Unfortunately, I would never be able to vote for the Labour Party again. And I want you to tell that to the party. He was very provocative, meeting people with their smug little views on things. You know, if anybody had smug little views, you don't be around Peter. He would be in there challenging and undermining and provoking. And then, some may say it's a coincidence, but within a month, Ed Miliband had, had rewritten the UK coal policy. So why did I build this archive? It's a cautionary tale. Not for us. Too late for us. But for... Well... For whoever, whatever, eventually finds this recording. A lot of people have said, you know, it's really lucky that, uh, you know, an actor like Pete, with his ability and his uh, stature, happens to be interested in climate change. And uh, it's just complete rubbish, you know. He's the best actor of his generation because of his integrity as a human being, you know. It shines through every single performance. And uh, because of his integrity as a human being, um, you know, he's interested in and willing to put himself on the line for, you know, the most important issue of our generation. And away you go.